What's going on my fellow residents, it's me the Frozen Cavern and today, oh goodness. For those of you who don't know, I already talked about another game, Sonic Forces, having stupid DLC practices, you may check that out if you wish at the end of the video, but I'm having to do it again with Blaze Blue Cross Tag. In a recent trailer, Blake from Ruby, since Ruby is also a part of this game, was revealed to be a DLC character for the game. And right off the bat, that's a pretty weird sign. Blake is one of the four characters that make up the main group, Ruby. You know, the show's title. The fact that she's DLC is odd, but there's also nothing about Yang as of yet. We don't know if she's going to be DLC, we don't know if she's going to be a default character, we don't even know if she's going to be in the game, period. I'm assuming she will be, but again, we don't have any information on her. And if she doesn't end up being DLC, then why have Blake be DLC and not just have all four by default? What's worse is that with the currently announced roster of characters being 20, there will be 8 DLC packs. Now, that's not really all that bad. Most fighting games usually have DLC packs, and Justice 2 is definitely one with a lot. Dragon Ball Fighters is another game that will also be having DLC packs. However, the amount of DLC for this game is uh, a little weird. It's going to have 20 characters for DLC. That's literally half the roster being DLC. And also looking at the current roster that's not DLC, most of them are from Blaze Blue and only a few from the three other series in the game. And going off of assumptions from that, the characters that will be DLC will more than likely be characters from other series aside from Blaze Blue. Okay, I'm sorry, but you're crossing over four series and you only have 20 default characters? Having a crossover between two series, that might be a little bit more acceptable. But having four, that can easily make 10 characters from each series to be fairly represented. You can vary that a little bit depending on how much favoritism you have towards the series as a company, but only slightly, and that would easily make 40 characters automatically, which would be a great amount to start off with. The biggest issue with this is that Arc Systems could use these characters from Ruby, Persona, and Under Night and Birth and hold a price tag over their heads, knowing that people want these characters while all of Blaze Blue is fine and already in the game. All I can assume is that more characters from the other series will get revealed, especially since the game is coming out in June, and that the characters won't be held hostage by maybe $3 for every individual character. And if it's on disc DLC, you know people are going to get pissed about that. For those of you who don't know what that means, it's when the game has the characters in the game, their files are there and can be accessed, however, they are locked behind a real currency paywall. The characters were put into the game just for you, the player, the consumer, to pay extra. The gamers are paying more for stuff that's already in the game. And keep in mind, games are already pretty expensive. Like $60 a game, most of the time, that's a lot of money. Having to spend any more than that already is kinda gonna get on our nerves. Again, all I can hope is that more characters for the series other than Blaze Blue get announced, and that there will be enough diversified default characters to justify 20 DLC characters. But anyways, that's going to be it for this discussion video. Do you agree with the practices that Arc Systems is using for this game, or do you disagree? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe for more video game content, but until next video, take care.